All right, welcome Destiny Travelers. As you come in, go ahead and like this video, share it to your networks, share it to your friends, invite somebody on. I'm gonna share it to my news feed. If I can, always gives me. All right, as you come in, go ahead and share this video and invite somebody on. And as you log on, in order for me to see your comments, you have to actually um, give StreamYard the permission to post your comments. So you have to give StreamYard permission in order for me to see your comments in this thread. We started Wednesday talking about a fatherless church and what that looks like and how we as believers come into the body of Christ, drawn by the Holy Spirit, passing through or working out our soul salvation with fear and trembling of the Lord Jesus Christ and how as we conquer that place, we then receive what is in the heart and in the mind of God concerning us. It is um, something that I have been journeying with the Lord, even in my own life, to begin to see the magnitude of the process and the dealings of God. So I want to share today on that wise and begin to just empower you in your walk with God so that you can receive what is in the heart of the father. It's just not enough knowing that you are a son or daughter of God because you accepted Jesus Christ as your personal savior. But you want to be one that receives what is in the heart and in the mind of the father. Good morning, Victoria. Thank you for joining. As you guys come in, go ahead and like, share, follow, comment, do all of those good things so that we can get this message out. Again, I am Sherry Downs. For those of you that may be logging in for the first time, I am a coach and author, conference host, and speaker. Um, and I am um, just empowering you while you're in your route to destiny. Um, this message is just so, um, I want to say, edifying for those that would receive it. So we're going to pray and we're going to pray for those that are watching live and for those that will watch this replay but that the Lord will begin to speak to your heart and draw you closer to God the Father. Lord, we pray for your goodness and your mercy upon everyone that will watch this live and those that will watch the replay, we pray, Father, for your words that will draw them in to a closer relationship with the Father. We pray, Jesus, that your love will begin to reach them. And Holy Spirit, we pray that you will begin to draw them to do the will of the Father in the earth and that the kingdom of God will reign through them. We thank you, Lord, for your goodness and your mercy that follows us. And I just pray, Father, that their eyes would see, their ears would hear, their heart would receive, and their minds obey what the Spirit of the Lord says. Holy Spirit, have your way in Jesus' name. Okay, so a fatherless church. We talked about this on Wednesday. We talked about what that looks like be, being a fatherless church and how we are drawn in by the Holy Spirit we receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. And at that moment, we have received salvation. But God doesn't want us to stop there. He wants us to enter into the fatherhood relational aspect of his nature and who he is and what he has for each and every one of us. There is a divine plan that God has written concerning each and every one of his sons and daughters. Before the foundations of the world, before the world was framed, there was something that God had in his mind, in his thoughts concerning you. We look at Jeremiah 29 and 11, and the Lord who um, 
has fathered the children of Israel and he has uh, married them and he has used the children of Israel and as an example people before the world to show us his character, to show us his dealings, to show us who he is and who he wants to be for us through the relationship that he has with the children of Israel, his chosen people. So when we look at that pattern, we see God time and time again, restoring, redeeming, being intimate with the children of Israel and being the one that is always going after them, re restoring them, delivering them, setting them free. But the most important thing that I draw out of that relationship is the intimacy that God had with the children of Israel, his willingness to reveal himself, his willingness to speak with them, his willingness to act sovereignly on their behalf. In the time that we're living in, I believe God is restoring the fathers, the natural fathers back in their position. And he is restoring the natural fathers within the context of family back to his, to their children. And we see this in the book of um, uh, Micah. We see this where God is promising that he will restore the fathers back to the mothers. I'm sorry, Malachi. We see this in the book of Malachi where God is restoring the fathers back to the children. And that's Malachi verse four and six. Let's read it for context. Behold, I will send you Elijah, the prophet, before the great and awesome day of the Lord comes. He will turn the hearts of the fathers to their children and the hearts of the children to their fathers. Lest I come and strike the land with a decree of utter destruction. Now, in this context, in the book of Malachi, we see where this is a picture of John the Baptist preparing the way for the Lord Jesus Christ. But I believe that right now what we are seeing is a spirit of Elijah that has hit the land, that God is raising up sons and daughters who carry this same mantle that these individuals are sent before this great revival that the Lord Jesus Christ and, and harvest of souls that will come into the kingdom, that we are seeing men and women rise up in the spirit of Elijah, restoring relationships, restoring families, restoring the position of men. This is why we have seen such a great attack on identity, especially with the men. We have seen um, where men are being demasculinated if that's a word, where the masculinity of men is being taken out of the male characteristic characteristics. It's like the enemy is trying to do away with the covering of the man, the essence of who the man is supposed to be in the earth, the fathers, those who are called to be mature, those who are called to cover within the context of the family unit. The enemy is trying to un, uh, do away with that. But I believe that just as well as we see the attack of the enemy, that God is moving in the same way. So we can blatantly see what the enemy is doing, but it takes spiritual eyes and discernment to be able to see what God is doing and what God is saying. So he is restoring the hearts back um, to the children, the hearts of the fathers, even where we have seen a fatherless generation. Come on. Even where we have seen fatherless homes, broken homes, I believe the Lord Jesus Christ uh, and God, our father and the Holy Spirit is moving in the earth to restore family. Type in the comments. He is restoring family so that when this revival comes, hallelujah, there is a foundation, not only in the church, but there is a foundation within the family unit on how God is building and how he is restoring his people. So what we are getting ready to see is we're getting ready to see a revival on marriages. Type in the comments, he's restoring family. He's healing families. He's bringing back 
families. Don't you worry about what the enemy has done. Don't you worry about the attack that is on your home, on your children. The Lord Jesus, within the uh, next 10 to 20 years, we're going to see even divorces be reconciled. We're going to see people that have been divorced for years, coming back into reconciliation. I believe this is the sovereign hand of the Lord that is doing this not only in the natural, but he is doing this thing in the realm of the spirit. Type in the comments, it's happening both natural and spiritual. And because of this great attack, we have to have eyes to see and ears to hear and a heart to receive what the spirit of the Lord is saying to the church. And so even in the book of Malachi chapter four, verses of uh, five and six, where he's saying the spirit of Elijah, the spirit of Elijah, which John the Baptist carried, he carried the mantle of Elijah. You are seeing mantles raised up in this hour, carrying a different message, carrying the message of prepare the way of the Lord carrying revival, carrying restoration, carrying a, a, a heart of a unity within the kingdom of God, restoring the church back to the fatherhood of God. So God is raising up fathers. God is restoring fathers. God, so begin to pray for the coverings, begin to pray for the fathers, begin to pray that the fathers are restored back to the children because children need the male gender. Children need that covering. It is the order that God set up from beginning of time. It does not change. It, God wants things restored back to his original intent and purpose. So this is what the Lord Jesus is saying. This is what he's saying. He said, before Jesus comes back, I am doing a restoration. He says, I am restoring things back to my original intent. And I am restoring the hearts of the fathers back to the um, children. So this is what God is doing in this hour. So what does that look like in within the church? There are those that God has chosen as fathers and mothers within the body of Christ. And it's as if the people of God have a, 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 a orphan spirit mentality where there is not strong uh, mental, strong fathers, strong mothers that really mother and that really father this next generation. We see where people have gotten astray. We see where people are running to and fro and children are lacking identity. So this is what we need. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In the body of Christ, we need fathers who are able to re release and affirm and give identity to all of these people within the body of Christ. So God is raising up people that carry a mantle that can bring the people of God back to the father. And what does this look like? This looks like teaching that will move people past the cross unto sonship. Here it is to rule and to reign. It's just not enough to know <clears throat> that you are a son or a daughter, but you need to go so far in God to the degree that you become like Jesus Christ. You start to walk out what is already ordained, what is written concerning you. It's not enough to walk in authority, but you need to be one who rules. Did you share this video? God wants you to be one who rules and reigns. Type in the comment, I'm rising up higher. So God is doing such a great work in this hour. Be looking for the restoration. Be praying for the agenda of heaven. Be interceding for your husbands, for those who have... Uh, um, Baby daddies begin to pray that their hearts are restored back to the children. For those who have 
pastors and apostles and leaders begin to pray that their hearts are restored back to the children of God. So this is what I believe is happening and what I am discerning in this hour that God is raising up mantles who also carry that spirit of John the Baptist crying out as a voice in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, returning the hearts back to the fathers. And it's as if we've gotten away from um, um, respecting mantles, respecting fathers, respecting those who were strong in the faith, neglecting who they're supposed to be. But God is restoring that relationship and he is building within us a family, a kingdom family, as he is restoring marriages, as he is restoring families, and he will use the family unit on which to build a strong church. If you have a strong family, if you have strong families, you have a strong church. Remember in the book of Genesis, and, and as he was always relating and introducing himself, he would introduce himself as the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Don't you believe the narrative that God uh, in, in endorses and, and wants divorce? No, God wants a generational legacy. God wants wholeness. God wants peace. God wants unity. God wants agreement. God is not the author of confusion. God is not the author of division. God doesn't divide. God doesn't put asunder. God doesn't cut off. That's just not his character. So we have to know the character of the one that we serve. Type in the comments, you better know him. On Wednesday, we talked about if you don't know Christ, you will begin to follow leaders blindly because Paul began to admonish those that followed him. He said, as I follow Christ, you follow me. Meaning when I stop following Christ, I give you my permission right now to stop following me. It's like somebody who is writing a, uh, 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 um, a statement and you know how they write um, wills. They say, I Sherry Downs of sound mind and body. Because one of the things that Paul understood is sin intoxicates, sin blinds you. Sin causes you to not even see correctly. Sin uh, 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 causes you to be out of your mind. Sin causes you to be, um, intoxicated and sick to the degree that you can't even make sound decisions and sound choices. So when somebody is writing a will and giving their uh, wishes as to if I was um, not able to make decisions for myself, if I was not able to in sound mind um, decide if I want to live or die, I'm, I'm making this declaration with a sound mind. So Paul understood the effects of sin. So what we have to do is know the Lord Jesus Christ for ourselves as we follow leaders. So we're not following blindly. When we don't know him, we don't know his voice. We don't know who's speaking to us and what spirit they're speaking from. So as God is dealing with you about the love of God, as he's, Jesus said this, if you love me, you'll keep my command. Before we get to the dealings of God himself, remember I said, you have to know the triune God. You have to know them in their respective uh, uh, uh expressions. You have to know God, the father, you have to know God, the son, and you have to know God, the Holy spirit. And you have to understand the dealings of each one. What is the job of Holy spirit? Holy spirit leads guides into all truth. Holy spirit teaches, Holy spirit comforts, Holy spirit helps. What is the, um, essence of Jesus. What does Jesus do for me? Jesus sanctifies. Jesus brings me into the body. Jesus reconciles me to the father. Jesus is the savior. Jesus is the intercessor. So when you know this, you begin to understand all of the levels of relationship that you will pass through. Holy Spirit draws you unto Christ. Christ then 
and, and Holy Spirit reveals Christ. So Holy Spirit is the one that draws you. Holy Spirit is the one that reveals Christ. I'm giving a recap of Wednesday. And, and, and Christ is the one that saves you, sanctifies you, brings you into the body. Christ is the reconciler back to God. Christ deals with your sinful nature. Christ purifies you. Christ forgives you. So when we're dealing with G um, Holy Spirit and when we're dealing with Jesus Christ, but Jesus said this, if you love me, Jesus Christ, you'll keep my commands. You'll do what I say. You'll uh, uh, keep the, the commands of God. You'll fulfill the Ten Commandments. If we feel the, fulfill the Ten Commandments, it's the whole book and the law and the prophets. All of it hangs on love. All of it is from a seat and a posture of love. But the Holy Spirit then brings the Ten Commandments and writes it on the tablet of our hearts. And when we are baptized into Jesus Christ, we then grow in obedience to Jesus. We grow in obedience to the word. We grow in obedience to the leadership of the Holy Spirit. And we are introduced to the father as his sons. Mm. Jesus said, if you are ashamed of me before men, I will be ashamed of you before my father. What is this saying to us that Jesus brings our names up before the father. Jesus introduces us to the father saying, this is the one that you've given me. And this one is faithful unto our agenda. Jesus brings your name in intercession before the father. Jesus is the one that will introduce us, that will uh, bring us up, that will uh, cause us to have a name in heaven. My God. So we're not experiencing the benefits of intimacy. We're not experiencing the benefits of destiny, which come from the father. The benefits of what's in the mind of God comes from the father. When we understand the position of the triune God, we're able to have the dealings of God and we're able to understand how to have victory in prayer and victory in our relationship with Jesus Christ, in our relationship with the triune God, in our relationship with the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is the one that is on earth, is the power that's manifesting the will of the Father. He's the one that's down here in us and among us getting things done. And the angels who are aiding him and assisting the Holy Spirit in partnership with us to get the job done. Type in the comments, I want to work for God. So when we are understand God as father. When we begin to position ourselves to honor earthly fathers and the position of earthly fathers, then God can bring us into the fatherhood of God. One of the, one of the prerequisites of um, ch raising up children, Kimberly, when we're raising up children, we have to teach them to obey father and mother. Mm, come on, type in the comments. You better obey. So we have to teach them honor and obedience to the earthly relationships so that God can then build upon those and bring them into a heavenly relationship. When we have broken lenses and when we have broken relationships in our family unit we struggle with the triune god we struggle with the nurturing of the church god is the father the church is the mother that merch um, nourishes and mothers the the children of god that equips and empowers the children of God. That's what the church is. The church aids God, who is the source, who is the giver of life, who is the one that everything comes out of in helping the children of God become mature sons and daughters. So when we position ourselves to honor and obey, this is why it's important that we honor earthly fathers. This is why it's important we honor, <clears throat> excuse me, the position of our baby daddies. This is why it's important because we are to honor 
father and mother, even if they're not, you honor the position of fathers, honor the coverings, honor their authority. What is this saying? When we position and teach our children to honor father and mother, we are teaching them to honor authority. Type in the comments. I know better now. So when we learn to honor authority, we can understand when we learn to honor authority on a natural level, we can then learn to honor authority in the realms of the spirit. We can never get from God what we don't have naturally. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. He said, how can you say you love me when you don't love your brother or your sister that you say uh, your brother or sister whom you see daily? How can you say you love me when you whom you never see and the person that you see every day, the person that you see in the flesh, you're not loving that person. If I have a hard time giving anything that I'm supposed to give out of God's kingdom to those that I see every day. I have a hard time doing it with God. So when we understand the natural, we can ascend into the realms of the spirit. We can understand authority and position ourselves as those who rule and reign within the kingdom of God. So God is bridging the gap. Type in the comments, he's bridging the gap. <clears throat> God is bridging the gap. God is bridging the gap. He's bridging the gap between father and children, both in the home and in the church. So what we are seeing is a famine of the truth, the word of God. What is God really saying? What is God really doing both in the logos and in the rhema? What is God, what is God's word say about this? There is such a hunger for truth. A lot of people are frustrated with church as usual. And they are looking for the Elijahs who are raising up with the word of the Lord in their mouths. The reason why John said he is a voice because the power of God was on the words that he was speaking. He was speaking out of the throne room of God. He was speaking out of the revelatory mind of God. For that time, there was a now word that would shift the people into the next dimension, into the next dimension dispensation. So there is such a hunger for truth. People don't want to be deceived. People don't want to be uh, 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 in the dark. There is such a hunger and a thirst for the truth. So God is raising up those who are mantled with an Elijah type uh, mantle and grace and anointing who are uh, the key that will unlock this next revival. So I believe this spirit of Elijah is returning the fatherhood. He's re They're returning the sons and daughters of God back to God. They are strengthening the sons and daughters with truth. They are bridging this gap and mentally and encouraging and equipping the sons and daughters of God to step into their rulership, to step into their reigning with God, to say, sons and daughters, you are living beneath your privileges. There is so much more for you just in walking in authority and casting out demons. No, you are supposed to be ruling, you are supposed to be reigning in your sphere of influence, the gifts, talents, abilities in that career, in that industry, in that ministry, in that calling God is giving you. You're supposed to be one that is ruling and reigning. Here it is. He says, they these benefits that we have in God, these benefits that we have in the kingdom are the thoughts of God concerning you. They are what's in the heart, in the mind of God. He told the children of Israel, I knew you 
No, he told the children of Israel, I know the plans. I know what's in my mind concerning you. I know where you're going. I know where I'm leading you. I know the process that you have to take. I know what I got to get out of you. I know the plans. There are plans. There's things that are written about you. There are blueprints that's on your life. There's divine connections, people that you're supposed to hook up with. There's a divine grace to get wealth that is already ordained for you, but you can not get this, this until you pass Jesus Christ, until you deal with that sinful nature, sanctify yourself, become faithful, produce the fruit of Holy Spirit on a whole nother level so that you can be vetted and trusted with what's in God's thoughts. God is just not issuing out his thoughts to everybody. You have to be one that Jesus wants to present to his father to say, father, this one, I trust with what's in your mind. This is because here it is. When God decides, nobody can change his, his he, when God decides, nobody can stop what he wants to happen. So when God speaks concerning you, it is done. When God releases concerning concerning you. It has to happen. He says, I swear by no other name, but my own name. He said, when I speak it, it is settled in heaven and on earth. So when God speaks about your destiny, nobody can stop that, but you, you will be the only one that can stop what God wants to do. How do I stop that? I quit. I throw in the towel. I willingly give it up like Adam and Eve did. I allow myself to be puffed up in pride. I can stop what God wants to do simply because I don't yield. But when God sanctifies you, when God vets you, he already knows what you can handle. He already knows what you can be trusted with. He already knows how much he can give you because he won't give you too much that will crush you you. So they have received salvation. But so when what we're seeing now, hear me, is a lot of people that are frustrated in churches because they don't know their purpose. They don't know what they're called to do in the earth. They cannot hear God. God is not speaking concerning their destiny. Eternity is in our hearts. This is what God says. Everything that you need, you came to the earth with it. It's all in you as a seed. Type in the comments. It's in me. It's in me. It's in me. So what do you have to do? You have to increase in your spirit, man, and decrease in the natural in order to access and walk out the plans that are in the mind of God, in order to walk out the identity that God sent you to the earth with. You have to grow in the Lord. You have to grow in the spirit. You have to become one that desires the spirit and sets your mind on spiritual things and sets your mind on the things of the spirit and not the things of the flesh. What are the things of the flesh? My fleshly connections, meaning my family of origin, biologically, my career, uh, uh, friends, family, hanging out, travel, uh, buying clothes, attaining things. And I'm not saying those things are bad. God wants, to, uh, wants us to enjoy that life fully, but he wants us to enjoy it within the context of being a son and daughter and ruling and reigning. So the this is what uh, Strong's Dictionary said about father. So I looked up the word father and father means one who imparts life and is committed to it. A progenitor bringing into being to pass on the potential likeness of or likeness for. So when we say God is our father, we have to journey in God. We have to go through the process of being transformed into the son into the likeness of the father, which is the pattern that we see in the son. The son was our example. The son was the one that we need to 
pattern ourselves after looking like Jesus. This is how we're supposed to live because if Jesus was the expression of God in the flesh, then we have to look just like God. Adam and Eve were made in the image and in the likeness of God. So if they were made in the image and the likeness of God, we have to look like God as well. We have to take on the image of God, the father, God, the son, and God, the Holy Spirit. What does this look like? This looks like the characteristics of the Trinity. This looks like love. This looks like joy. This looks like peace. This looks like the manifestation of the fruit of Holy Spirit. How do I know if Holy Spirit is in you fully? How well do you walk out those fruit? How well do you express love, joy, peace, goodness, meekness, kindness, temperance. How well do you walk in that fruit? How powerful can that fruit manifest in your life? How much does that fruit arise to the surface when you encounter adversity, when you encounter trials, when you encounter situations that don't go your way, when you encounter opposition, when the enemy comes against you through people, how well do you express that fruit? How quickly does that fruit rise to the surface? And how quickly does your flesh rise to the surface? How powerful can that fruit manifest? How quick does that fruit arise? Do you respond in love right away? Or does it take three days? Does it take a week before you respond in love? That'll tell just how closely you are being transformed and how far you are from being transformed in the image of God. We have to be ones that take inventory of our our sonship. Does Holy Spirit have to deal with you for three, four weeks a month before you go back and apologize? Does he have to deal with you before you actually get patience for that situation? Or can he speak right away and say, have patience? And then immediately your spirit calms down. Or does Holy Spirit not speak at all? And because you are so full of him, you express patience already because there is no place in you because your flesh is so dead to the degree that only the image of God emerges. God wants his sons and, da and daughters to rise up in this hour and express the image of God through rulership and reigning. Type in the comments, it's just not enough being a son. I need to rule and I need to reign. Jacqueline, it's just not enough walking in authority. I need to walk in rulership and dominion. I need to subdue and have dominion in my sphere of influence. I need to have rulership and dominion in my home. I need to have rulership and dominion in my prayer life. I need to have rulership and dominion in the industry, in the career, in my job, in my firm, in my finances. It's just not enough to cast out demons. I need to see my bank accounts increase. It's just not enough to buy a home. I need to have land and property, equipment and businesses. I need to spread out and have property everywhere because this is kingdom authority. My God, did, did you share this? So when we're seeing a fatherless church, we're not seeing the manifestation of sons and daughters, Victoria, moving into rulership and reigning. This is what a lot of what 2019 was. 2020, 2019, 2020 was the manifestation of moving those who break out, who are been vetted and trusted in the realm of the spirit to the next level. He is positioning and moving those who have been trusted to rule and to reign. Those who took the low road, those who humbled themselves under the mighty hand of God, those who were those who said, he, he, when he said, if my my people who, who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from my wicked way. He said, I'll hear your voice and I'll heal the land. He said, I'll hear from heaven. I'll hear what heaven has to say and I'll decree what heaven has to say on earth. My God, I feel that thing. So he just doesn't want us to understand sonship. But that's just a level that you have to pass through. 
in order to enter into the kingdom, you got to know that you're a son, my God. But God doesn't want us want us to stay there, Martha. God doesn't want us to stay there, Shandrell. God wants us to be those that can be trusted to rule and to reign. Type in the comments, I, I need to rule and I need to reign. God wants you to move from that place of just being a son and a daughter and walking in authority. Yes, it's serving you. Yes, you're seeing things happen, but God wants you to rule and he wants you to reign. This was the whole, whole, uh, 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 this was a part of the redemption plan that God would get in the sons and daughters of God and they would be ones to rule and to reign, bringing humanity back to its original state the process of bringing sons, the process of bringing humanity back to God's intention in the garden. When he created Adam, he said to rule and reign and have subdue over the earth. So God wants you, Mary, to begin to be one that shall rule and to reign. So Jesus, when he was expressing his uh, uh, identity was when he was revealing himself, he was telling the, the people of that day. He was telling the leaders of that day that he was God's son. And they had a problem with this because they said, how are you his son? You're, you're equaling yourself with God because if you're God, then you carry the same DNA. You carry the same essence of God. Jesus said, I have been in the presence of my father. You don't even know where I come from. I have been sent here by God. But see, Jesus understood something about sonship that we have to get today. When we enter into the kingdom of God, when we pass from death to life, when we accept who Jesus Christ is we understand that there is a book written concerning us. We come from the thoughts of God. He told Jeremiah, Jeremiah, before I even formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you. I was intimate with you. I had thoughts about you. I conceived you. I perceived you. I already knew that what you were, do, were supposed to do. I already knew who the hookups were. I already knew how to move through you. I knew your temperament. I knew everybody, everything about you, Jeremiah. So so this is what God is saying to you. Everything about you, he already knows. He knows you. You came from the thoughts of God. You came from the heart of God. But what you have to do is be to begin to connect with God as the source and say, God, less of the flesh and more of the spirit. When we die to the flesh, when we break ties and allegiances to our fresh fleshly relationships. What does that mean? That means when I stop walking in my carnal nature and I start taking on the nature of the spirit and I start taking on the manifestations of the Holy Spirit, when I start decreasing in my allegiance to my fleshly relationships and have more of a Ah, uh, let me get this word right. Allegiance, I'll use it, <laughs> to my spiritual family. Here it is. Not just church people. Kingdom relationships. Those who are walking as sons and daughters. Jesus said this, who are my family? He said, those that do the will of my father. That's who my family is. Jesus expressed that. He broke ties and importance and allegiance with his natural family and began to put precedence. Uh, he began to put precedence on his spiritual family. Jesus transformed, my God. Jesus transformed scriptorially right before our eyes. He began to increase, the Bible says, in wisdom and stature, in favor with God and man. The will of God became more evident and more of a necessity and more of a desire than his earthly connections. It doesn't mean that he discredited them. It doesn't mean that he did away with them. We see that on the cross. 
we see where he looked at his mother, but here it is. His mother was both his mother in the natural and the spiritual. When we have familial DNA connections that are spirit led, that are spirit as well, that move in the kingdom as well, we have a double whammy. My God today, share this video. So when we have connections that are both DNA led and spirit led, meaning our mother is a mother in the in the natural and she's a mother in the spirit. We can have natural mothers that don't know God, that don't walk in the spirit, that are not kingdom. Those are the relationships that God says you need to you need to um, say who your allegiance is to. You need to have an allegiance to those who do the will of God. When you have an allegiance to those that don't do the will of God, you are choosing the enemy's side. Mm, my God today. You are choosing carnal relationships over kingdom relationships. Sons don't do that. <laughs> my God. Sons and daughters don't do that. Sons and daughters know who their family is. Jesus said, who is my family? I'm talking about the father fatherless church. I'm talking about what we're experiencing now. We're experiencing allegiances with those that don't do the will of the father. We're experiencing allegiance with those who have demonic agenda. We're seeing where sons and daughters are not hearing the call of the father. He said, my sheep know my voice and a stranger, they will not follow. We see a lot of people following their favorite preachers. We're seeing a lot of people following those who have enticing words of man's wisdom and man's speech, but they're neglecting the cry of the father God. They're neglecting the cry of the voices of Elijah that are raising up to bring back the breach to bring the children of God back to the heart of God, back to the word of God, back to the truth of God, back to who God is and what we are supposed to do in the earth, which is to rule and to reign. Type in the comments, I shall rule and I shall reign. God just doesn't want you to just keep living this life, struggling with the sin nature. That's not what Jesus died for. I told you guys Wednesday that it was an expensive price. He didn't die just so you can struggle. He didn't die so poverty can overwhelm you the rest of your life. You have to move beyond the cross. My God, type in the comments, I'm moving beyond the cross. I'm moving beyond the cross. I'm moving beyond that place where I'm struggling with sin. I am gonna be one that overcomes the sinful nature. I'm gonna be one that moves into sonship, moves into authority, moves into the posture of being one that God can trust to rule and to reign. So he was uh, offending here it is. My God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Please share the video so that those that need to hear this message can hear it. Okay. And we thank you, Holy Spirit, for breathing on the algorithms. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for speaking to us this morning. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that this message is reaching the heart and the conviction has come and the desire to move higher the desire to move past the cross, the desire to just move past salvation into being ones that can be trusted to rule and to reign on the behalf of the kingdom as ambassadors in Jesus' name. So Jesus was offending the religious leaders of that day because he was saying that I have the essence of God in me. I walk in the earth as his son and daughter. I have his nature. I came from him. I was in his presence. When we are ones that stay in the presence of God, when we are ones that minister before the Lord in prayer, in intercession, in worship, in adoration, in obedience, in humility, in sanctifying ourselves, this is ministry before the Lord. And God then deposits within us supernaturally on a metabolic level. We begin to be changed in the supernatural realm. We begin to be changed and we begin to increase in heaven. We begin to gain greater 
reverence in heaven. We begin to gain greater uh, 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 recognition in heaven. We begin to be ones that Jesus said, oh, oh. Whoa, whoa, she here again. Oh, oh, she's staying longer. Oh, 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 she's she talking now. She obeying. You begin to be one that is on heaven's radar and hell's radar. You begin to be one that you are recognized both in heaven and in earth because you are increasing in your spiritual life and you are decreasing in your natural life. This is why we are supposed to hunger and thirst after righteousness. And when we do that, he says, we will be filled. Filled with what? The very essence of God. We will be filled with the very nature of God. We will begin to be filled with the very presence of God. We'll begin to be filled with the very expression of God. We will, be, we will begin to be glory carriers walking in the earth. And this is what it is. Those that are religious, those that don't understand the realm of the spirit, they won't understand that you have passed from sonship to rulership. They don't, they won't understand that you are one that carries the expressed image of God. You are now a glory carrier. You are now one that has been changed on a metabolic level. You are one that is full of the essence and the nature and the love of God. You are one that is full of the spirit of God. You're not one that can be just emptied out. You're not one that they can just deal with like they deal with everybody else because you have increased in both the heavenly realms and the demonic realm, meaning that you're on hell's radar because you can be one that will be used as an arrow shot out in the kingdom of God for the glory of his name. Is this blessing you like it's blessing me? So, so Jesus defend, uh, offended the religious leaders of that day because he spoke with such authority. He spoke with such definite confidence in who he was, what he was, and what he carried. I'm talking about a church that is fatherless. I'm talking about a fatherless church because when we know God as Father, we begin to be ones who are raised up and established in him, carrying the essence of God, carrying unapologetically the mandate of God, carrying unapologetically the voice of the Lord, that fire comes out of our mouths. And I decree and declare upon those that are listening now that God has been dealing with you about moving past the cross and into sonship and into rulership and reigning that you will be one that has a desire and a hunger and a thirst for the things of God. So he began to offend those. And Jesus, he began to express the image of God. He began to express the glory of God. Glory is the expression and the image of God. Glory is the expression of the Godhead. Glory is the expression of who God is in the earth. We are expressing his glory. Adam and Eve were made in the image of God in, in his likeness. And there was no sin in them. They were ones that carried the expression of God. They carried the image of God. They carried the glory of God. They carried the radiance of God. But when sin entered them, they began to be dimmed down and their life Light wasn't shining, but here it is. Jesus came so that we can be restored back into that image and become glory carriers. This is why we have to let our light so shine because the glory of God brings a light around your life and people will begin to flock to that light. People will begin to be drawn to that light. People begin to be ones that will say, it's just something about you. I feel like I have to connect with you. I feel like you have what I I need. God told me to come and sit under you. God told me to come and serve you. God told me to come and be a part of what you're doing because your light is shining. Thank you, God. So Jesus tells them this, pray like this, our father in heaven, May your name be kept holy. So there's a reverence for his authority. There's a reverence for his fatherhood. 
for us understanding God in a more intimate way, for us understanding God as the source that has begotten us, for us understanding God on an individual level, for us understanding God because Jesus came and in his finished work, he broke open, he uh, separated, he tore the veil so that we didn't have to use an earthly person such as a priest to get to God, that each one of us individually can come boldly in our prayer closets, in our time of relationship, in relating with God, we can come boldly to the throne of grace and obtain mercy and find favor in time of need. So he was separating that middle partition. He was doing away with the middleman. And he says, I'm going to become the middleman. I'm going to become the last and final sacrifice. I'm going to become the great high priest. And when I sit down, nobody else has to sit. My God, today. I'm going to become the savior, the sacrifice. Mm, I'm going to become the one that brings this thing back together. It is the final sacrifice. So when they deal with me, they can get to the father. So, 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 so. Jesus was telling them, come back into the fatherhood. Let me reconcile you back. Let me bring you back into intimacy. Let me breach, let me bridge this gap. Let me repair this breach between humanity and the father. Let me be one that brings you back into intimacy. Let me tell you that he is your father. And when you go to him, go to him as father, as the one that has everything you need. Go to him as the source. Go to him as the supplier. Go to him as the healer. And when you pray, you're going to pass through me and you're going to begin to receive what you need from him because you have positioned yourself as he is the one that holds the victory. He is the one that holds the plans. He is the one that holds the blueprint. He is the one that has written about you. He is the one that holds the divine thoughts about you. He is the one that has preordained your works in the earth. He is the one that has the divine connections. He is the one that has just the right book that you need to write. He is the one that has the right career. He is the one that has the gifts and, and, and talents and abilities that are on the inside of you. So Jesus said this, behold, I come in the volume of the book. This is something that the Lord began to uh, highlight to me. Our lives are a pattern of Jesus Christ. He is the pattern that we should pattern ourselves to look, look like. We should be looking more like Jesus. We should be looking and responding more like him. We should be looking and responding in his nature, in his character, in the express image of God, in the glory of God. Jesus said this, behold, I come in the volume of the book that is written of me, okay? So if Jesus had a book written about him, mm, my God, thank you, Lord. And the whole Bible, the whole Bible is the revelation of Jesus Christ. The Old and the New Testament is revealing. The oldest types and shadows. We see the character of God. We see the dealings of God. We see the mercy of God. We see types and shadows of Jesus Christ in the Old Testament. We see examples. We see uh, uh, how God is dealing with people in the New Testament. We see all those things where we can refer back to the old and, 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 and uh, understand the new. Here it is. If Jesus has a book written about him, Jacqueline, Martha, Isa, Kimberly, Raquel, Alyssa, if Jesus has a book written about him, there is a book written about you. Mm, my God today. But Jesus said this, behold, I come in the volume of the book. I come to fulfill this thing. I come to do everything that is written in it. Mm, my God. This is why he, he, he quoted Isaiah. He said, I, mm, let me get it. <laughs> Thank you, Holy Spirit. Whoo, he has anointed me. All right. Whoo. Isaiah 61. 
the Jesus in the temple, he began to quote Isaiah 61. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord, and this was the prophecy of Jesus Christ that was written. So here it is. There is something that is written about you that somebody's prophesied in the earth. There is something that's written about you in heaven that somebody's prophesied in the earth. So prophecy is the vocal revelation of what the book says about you. We see it here in Isaiah. Isaiah prophesied about what was written about Jesus Christ, about what Jesus was supposed to do. And here Jesus comes along in Isaiah chapter 61. He is in the temple and he's repeating this prophecy in his lifetime that was prophesied thousands of years beforehand. Isaiah prophesied this, that Jesus would come and this is what he's do. He said, the year of the Lord's favor is when Jesus came. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has, here it is. He's giving his message. He's giving what he is getting ready to do. The Lord has anointed me, empowered me, gave me capability, chosen me, set me apart for, to do, to bring good news to the poor. So his mission, what he was supposed to do and fulfill in the book, was to bring good news to the poor. <clears throat> what is he saying to the poor and lowly? That there's riches, that there's abundance, that their station can change. He has sent me to, to bind up the brokenhearted. The brokenhearted can now receive healing because I'm here. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives. What is that? They are free. I'm opening prison doors. I'm opening prisons to those who are bound. So Jesus began to declare what was written in the books, what was written about him, what was prophesied about him. He began to express what heaven said about him in the earth. What has God said about you? When we get into the fatherhood of God, when we get into sonship, God wants us to move to ruling and reigning. God wants us to be those that can hear what's in the mind of God. And God will begin to then tell you what you are supposed to do on earth, the assignment that you're supposed to complete, how you're supposed to help the vision of God, the appointment that you have been given, the a position that you have been given, the assignments that you have been given to carry out for his mission. So this is how we know what's in the book. We know what's in the book because the Holy Spirit will reveal them. We know what's in the book by the prophetic that is on our lives. This is why it's important to have be around prophetic people. This is why it's important to know the voice of God. This is why it's important to be able to discern what the spirit of the Lord is doing in your life, what he's working out in you, the processes of God. Have you been one that is moved past the cross? If you're still dealing with the cross and struggling with sin, chances are you might not hear what's in the heart of the father, Jesus. You might not hear the, the good works that have already been prepared for you. Jesus, you may be getting in position because people have told you what to do. People have told you, but God hasn't told you that. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh. In the latter part of Jesus' example, and I'm getting ready to close this thing. He says, thy kingdom come on earth. Here it is, in me. What John the Baptist came preaching, preparing the way of the Lord. Jesus came bringing the kingdom, establishing the kingdom in hearts. He began to establish the kingdom of God, righteousness, peace, and joy in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit in the hearts of people. We need the kingdom and 
in people so that the kingdom can be expressed out of people. The kingdom cannot be expressed if we don't give the kingdom in people. God doesn't just want you to stop at sonship and authority. He wants you to be one who can rule and reign. Rulership and reigning. Headship. Bringing us into politics. Bringing us into government. Not just in the church. He wants us to be in industries. He wants us to rise out of the four walls. He wants the fivefold ministers to perfect the saints to maturity so that they can be those like Jesus Christ who are ruling and reigning in their sphere of influence. Everybody is not apostles. Everybody is not pastors, teachers, evangelists, preachers. Everybody is not that. There are some people that are supposed to rule in politics for the kingdom of God. There are some people that are supposed to rule and reign in education for the kingdom of God. Here it is. Whatever God has placed on your life, you want to be one that is walking in rulership. You want to be one that you can pass the cross. You may be one that the Holy Spirit is still trying to draw you and convince you of Jesus. He's still trying to deal with your heart to convince you of what Jesus has done for you. You might not have even been dealing with Jesus. You might just be keep being drawn by the Holy Spirit. And that's okay. Wherever you find yourself in the process of Re being redeemed unto God and reconciled to God. You want to be one that reaches the place of rulership. You want to be one that God can trust to rule and to reign. Now here it is. God needs to trust us. Type in the comments. God must trust us. So in moving from sonship we may understand some of the things that we're called to do. We may discern some things that we're called to do, but we won't get the full rulership and reigning until we pass sonship. Jesus said, if you love me, you'll do what I say. If you love me, you'll keep my word. We have to begin to be ones that God can trust to reveal everything to, to give the full benefit package to, to say what she says, we backing her up. This is what this is what Jesus was telling Peter. Whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. We got to be trusted with keys. Mm. Everybody don't have keys. Everybody don't have keys. You have keys when you can be trusted with revelation. When you can be trusted as sons and daughters. When heaven can trust, whatever you say on earth, we'll say it in heaven. Everybody can't be trusted like that. Everybody can't be trusted to where when you say it, we back you up. You got to be one that is vetted in the spirit. So when God starts to tell you, you are this, you're a prophet, prophesy, do these things. Make sure you can prove yourself faithful. Those who are faithful in the training, here it is. Before you get to rulership, you'll get to a training. You'll go through training. Before you get to rulership, you'll go through training, Jacqueline. You'll go through a process of training for reigning. Jesus. So he said, how faithful is this one? Without the full benefits, without the full power, how faithful are they? How, how, how diligent are they to the work? How serious are they for the mission? Are they doing things out of love? Before you get to the rulership and the reigning, you'll go through the training. And if you can pass the training. Now, some people haven't gotten to the rulership because they're still in the process of training for reigning. You may have a, a ministry, but you're still in training. Ah, uh, Jesus. Jesus, because rulership draws people to you. Oh, my God. Rulership 
anoints your voice. Rulership lets your light shine before men when you are a ruler. Past those who are, God has been telling you to do certain things. God has been giving you assignments. God has been increasing your faith. God has been uh, teaching you about sonship. God has been teaching you about purity. God has been teaching you about stability. Whatever he is teaching you, whatever he is training you for, make sure you can be one that is vetted in the spirit to be chosen as one that can rule and reign. Everybody ain't chosen to rule and reign. It is those that God can trust. It is those who God chooses. Be one that can be chosen. Many are called. Many hear the calling, but not everybody gets past the training because not everybody makes it to rulership. God has designed it that we all rule and we all reign and we all let our light shine. He said that you could be a city set on a hill that cannot be hid. When you are a ruler and a reigner, you cannot be hid. People cannot deny the calling, the mandate, the favor, the increase, the process. They cannot deny the sonship. They cannot deny the authority. They cannot deny the purity. They cannot deny the essence of what you carry. We're talking about a fatherless church that has not entered into ruling and reigning because we're struggling to get past. So even as the Elijahs are coming forth, ask the Lord to give you an ear to hear those who have his voice, those who are speaking out of heaven, those who have the voice. What is the voice John the Baptist was talking about? The voice of heaven. I am a voice from heaven declaring the word of the Lord, declaring Make way, make way for him. I am, I'm setting the course for the triune God. I'm setting the way for Jesus Christ. I'm setting the way for revival. I'm bringing the people back to the word, back to the truth, back to reverencing God, back to wholeness, back to hungering and thirsting after righteousness so that you can be filled up with him and that you can be a glory carrier in the earth. I pray that you receive this message. I pray that the Holy Spirit would ignite you to set you ablaze, to be one that gets in position, to be one that asks God, what is my position and my unique assignment within your vision? It is God's vision, but it is our unique position and assignment. Lord, what have you given me to do in the earth what is my assignment? What am I supposed to do in your great vision? It's all God's vision. It's all God's plan. We just have a position and an assignment in it. We're just fulfilling our part of the bigger scope. There are many that have come before us that, have, that are dead and gone, that have fulfilled their position in God's great vision, in God's stuff. This is God's stuff. It's his church. It's his people. It's his resources. It's all his. It all belongs to him. We're just playing our part. How are you playing your part with your family? How are you playing your part with your children? So when you're dead and gone, they carry on the mission that God has started in you. Fulfill your assignment as sons and daughters of the most high God. He is your source. He is the one that sits up. He is the one that takes down. He is the one that causes people to come from the back to the front. He is the one that ordains him. Look to him for everything. Your provision, your increase, your instructions, your blueprints, your timing. Become ones who depend upon him. Jesus said, I do nothing except I see my father do it. He says, except God tell me to do it. I don't want to do it because it's wasted time. Jesus knew he didn't have long on the earth. So his steps had to be succinct. His steps had to be sure. He couldn't waste time. Don't become ones that waste 
time. Don't become ones that have your hands in a whole lot of things that God is not breathing on. Don't become ones that are not doing eternal works. Do everything in him. Because it's, it's only what we do with God that is going to amount to something. It, that's the only thing that has eternal value. We don't want to do a whole lot of earthly stuff that God is not telling us to do. Everything we do, we want to do in him. This is where it, the scripture says it's in him that we live, move, and have our being. We're moving in him because we're doing everything in sync with what's written. We're fulfilling what's written. When we fulfill what's written, we will be judged on what's written. We will be rewarded on what's written. Did we do what was written? Jesus said, behold, I come in the volume of the book. I got to fulfill what the book says about me. So Jesus had to preach to the poor. He had to release people from prison. He had to heal blind people. He had to heal those who were brokenhearted. He had to heal. He had to bring people out of darkness. He had to fulfill that scripture because it was written about him. In order for him to receive what God was, to, was giving him, which was us as his inheritance. Everything that he has, we are joint heirs with him, but we have to fulfill the assignment. Start asking God, what have you written about me? What's in your book? I want to be one that when I stand before you, you're not judging me. You got, listen, God's going to say, I wrote here that you were supposed to preach and 50,000 souls was, would come to the kingdom, but you never got there. You struggled with the opinions of man. I wrote here that you were supposed to raise this person from the dead because this person was supposed to do blah, 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 blah. They didn't do because you didn't do. So their blood is required on your head. We don't want to be judged on what we didn't do. We don't want to be ones that cannot receive the rewards. We want to be ones that's fulfilling the works of the Lord, fulfilling what's written about us in our books. Remember, our lives are a mirror of Christ. He is our pattern. He is the one that we should be patterning ourselves after. So if Jesus had a book, you got a book too. And if you don't do like Jesus and come in the volume of the book that's written about you and start get to the place where you start walking in the rulership. When you start walking in the rulership, you in the book. Mm. When you start walking in rulership and reigning, you're in the book. Now here it is. Some lives may be attached to you stepping in rulership and reigning. So if you don't step into rulership and reigning, those that God gave you or assigned to your life to attach to you to, so that they could get there, they might not ever get there because you didn't step into it. So all of that's going to be required on your hands. Jesus said, I have kept everyone that you have given me except the son of perdition. He was already a devil. He fulfilled his assignment. Because had he not did it, I wouldn't have got to my assignment. <laughs> uh, Jesus, we want to keep everyone God gives to us. But God wants to give them to them when you have passed the cross, when you has pa have passed sonship. When you understand sonship, then you're moving into rulership and reigning. I pray this bless you. I pray that you receive it in the manner in which the Holy Spirit gave it to me. We're getting back to being a church that knows the Father, is receiving from the Father, a church that's walking in rulership and dominion, a church that's walking in maturity. God is bringing people from the back to the front for such a time as this. Please share this video. Share it to those that need it. Share it to those that will be encouraged and uplifted by it. I pray that this blessed you. If you're looking for coaching and mentoring, you can go to my website, www.touchdownsenterprise.com. 
Bookshop.com. If you're looking for books, I've written books with the partnership of the Holy Spirit. Go to my website, purchase, purchase the books that the Holy Spirit um, birthed through me for the glory of the Lord. Um, I'm excited about what God is doing. If you have not yet, follow this page, like this page, share this page with those that need this message. I love you guys with the love of the Lord and I love you with my love. Thank you, Destiny Travelers, those that are in route to destiny. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for liking. Thank you for uh, sending this video to encourage and bless somebody. Have a wonderful Friday. See you next week, Wednesday, 7.15 a.m. I'm Sherry Downs and I love you. Be blessed.